The way that she describes kissing goes so hard. I am so here for it. I feel like I'm a teenager reading Twilight for the first time again. I knew he was bad news bears from the very beginning. Hello my beautiful, wonderful angel bestie queens. I hope they're having the most wonderful day of your entire stinking life. I'm very excited for this vlog because we are doing an entire vlog dedicated to her. As she deserves, this book is taking the entire stinking world by storm and I need to know why everyone is screaming, crying, losing their minds over this book. It has dragons. As I understand it, it's like a dragon training school. We're getting some like dragon riders. It's a new adult. I heard that there's a little bit of spiciness in here, which I was pleasantly surprised. I had completely thought this was a YA book. This is going to be a spoiler free vlog. So if you haven't read this yet, absolutely no worries. What I might do at the very end of this vlog is put in a tiny section where I do go through more spoiler filled thoughts, but I will give a bunch of warning and say like, this is the spoiler section. And if you don't want to see that, I will leave a timestamp of when to like skip to to get to the outro of this video. But this is going to be just as I'm reading my reactions, my thoughts, completely spoiler free. And I'm so excited. I hope you are too. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe, and let's get into reading Fourth Wing. Okay, I am <laughs> two chapters in and I'm already obsessed with the way that this book started. It starts off with such anticipation and it's giving Hogwarts but make it Dragon Training School. We did meet Zayden. I think that's how you say his name. I really like Violet. I feel like she is a very likable character right from the very beginning. So, oh, and I also love... We've gotten some world building so far. Very, very seamless. I'm loving it. I love that there's a map in the beginning of the book because I've been referring to that. So I've been reading the first couple chapters a little bit more slowly. We've been on sprints. We did one 45 minute sprint and I only read like 20 pages, but I feel like I really want to absorb all of the little details of this book and the characters and the world. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited to meet the dragons. I just can't wait. So, so far so good. Zayden is tall, dark, handsome. He has kind of like a tattoo. He has like this mark on his hand and it goes all the way up his neck to his jaw. And I'm like, absolutely yes. I've seen some fan art for Fourth Wing so far, but I've been very nervous to like search for fan art because I don't want it to be spoilery in any way. I feel like as I get through this book though, I'm going to want to look up more fan art and maybe like print it out and stick it in my book because I've been doing that with Throne of Glass and I really, really love it. So that might be happening. Hello besties. Good morning. I have some updates on Fourth Wing. So I read up to chapter nine, page 105 last night. I'm surprised at how much I'm loving this because usually with overhyped books, like this it impacts me in a negative way because I feel like I'm hypercritical because it's like, okay, people are freaking out about this book. That means that I need to have like laser focus for all of the weaknesses in a book, if that makes sense. I don't know why I am the way that I am, but that's happened to me in the past. Like the one that I really think about is House of Sky and Breath. Like that really happened to me with House of Sky and Breath. But this has been such a pleasant surprise. I think that the 
characters are really really interesting so far. I love everyone that we've met and they all have very distinct personalities. I also really love our main character, which helps a lot. I love Violet. I love her backstory. I love that she has this disability representation and she is the underdog in this situation, in this cutthroat military school. And we also got introduced to the dragons very briefly and they are also not inducing warm and fuzzies. Like they are brutal creatures. Everything about this book is brutal and I'm obsessed with it. I'm so obsessed but I'm also scared. It's very clear that Rebecca Yaros isn't afraid of death and I'm scared where that's gonna go. I'm also really enjoying the sibling dynamic. So Violet comes from like a military family. Her sister Mira and how she's like prepping Violet for all the things that are to come in her training and trials until she gets to like the final dragon test. I'm also really loving Brennan, so Violet's older brother, Brennan. I love how he's being incorporated into the story as well. I'm not a massive fan of Dane. I feel like we're trying to be led in a certain direction, and I'm not a massive fan of his, and I love Zayden. I love Zayden so much. I really hope that's how you say his name, and I'm not just like butchering that, but I'm absolutely loving him so far. I just love a book, a fantasy book that takes place at a school. Something about it. It just, it's my favorite. Did I pre-order the second book last night? Yes, I did. Why do you ask? day okay first of all no spoilers but the gauntlet scene and presentation day oh my gosh I'm unwell I'm <laughs> the feeling that this book is giving me like I am so invested in these characters and all of the scenes and all of the magic and all of the dragons I love the dragons so much I've read a little bit more of fourth wing I'm now on chapter 18 page 207. I am absolutely adoring this book so much. I originally wanted to read it over like two or three days. Like I wanted to just binge read it and get through it, but I'm just loving it so much that I'm trying to savor every single second of it. And so I do want to read a good portion of it today. Today is Thursday because like I need to know what happens, but at the same time, I don't want to like fly through it because I know after this book, I'm going to have such a reading hangover. I read through the threshing last night and no spoilers. So I'm not even going to give a reaction of what happens. I will have that little like spoiler section at the end if you do want to know my thoughts and feelings and emotions. I think that my page goal for today, like I said I'm a little bit over 200 pages and this book is just under 500 pages. I think I want to read up to page 350 today. Yeah I want to read up to chapter 28. It's massive but I'm gonna put a sticky note where my page goal is. I love doing that because it really helps to see like the whole section that I want to read. When I read this book it's like I just fall back into it. I am not in my room reading a book, I am in this story with the characters. That's how immersive I think this writing is. I'm not gonna lie, I struggled a little bit with the dragon names and I was like, okay, I definitely want to, number one, reread this book before the second one comes out in November because this has just been such a wonderful experience that I want to like reread it in preparation for book two. If I can get my hands on the audiobook for my reread, I think that that would be a really fun experience. So that's where I'll leave it for now. Good morning, my friends. It is Friday. Last night I read up to page 400 in Fourth Wing. It's a good thing I wasn't filming. I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I was punching the air. I was so unwell. The romance in this book, I can't, like I literally can't even deal with it. It's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites literally Ever. So there's that. I feel like I'm a teenager reading Twilight for the first time again. My 
emotions are so connected with like the characters it's actually embarrassing i only have 100 pages left less than 100 pages left i'm gonna be finishing it this morning so scared that this book is just going to annihilate me because i've heard that it ends on a cliffy but also I don't know how I'm going to move on from this book. I don't know what I'm going to read after this because this has had such an impact on me that I was not expecting. And this is like my new favorite book. And it's definitely like my favorite book of the year so far, which is crazy because I've read some really good books. I literally just read Sea of Ruin. That was absolutely incredible. I read One Dark Window that I absolutely loved. Fourth Wing is taking over my life. So I will be filming my reaction to the end. I drink my coffee. I'm going to, I think, like watch like a booktube video. I'm probably just stalling for time because I don't, I don't want to read the end of this book. I do, but I don't. Okay, y'all. It is freaking noon already. And I've been doing everything in my freaking willpower to procrastinate reading Fourth Wing and i'm getting it together i'm not giving myself the option to get distracted anymore we are going to go to starbucks get a coffee and i'm going to sit in my car so that i don't have any distractions and i am going to be reading this book Okay. Why am I so scared right now? I literally am so freaking scared. I have my fourth wing playlist, which is a vibe. I found a very secluded parking spot so that there wouldn't be any distractions. We have our brown sugar oat milk shaken espresso, which it's been a while since I've got Starbucks, honestly. I've been doing such a good job being a good nugget and making coffee at home. We're gonna read this book. Please pray for me. The way that this woman describes kissing, like there's obviously more than just kissing in this book because it's new adult, but the way that she describes kissing goes so hard. I am so here for it. <laughs> I've been in this car for almost two hours. I'm on the last chapter and I'm losing my mind and it's in Zayden's POV and I don't know what to do with that information, but I'm screaming. I wasn't filming. I wasn't filming the last page and I don't know why I just got so sucked in. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Sorry, I will process words now. Five stars. Favorite book of the year so far, hands down, absolute no question. There were a couple times in the fourth act that I got frustrated with Violet, but no spoilers. I understand why the author, like, did that. Like, we just, we needed that. This is being so cryptic, and I'm sorry, but like, I just loved it. I loved it. I loved everything about it. I can understand how, like, I've seen some people's reviews of the book, and again, no spoilers, but I can see how some people say, like, the romance is a little bit cringe. It wasn't for me. Like, I was obviously screaming and losing my mind. There were moments where the dialogue was a little bit, like, cliche, but I loved it. Like, I was eating up every second of it. I don't mind stuff like that. I love the politics. I love the plot. I love the setup. I didn't mind that the first, like, 60% of the book was all set up for the world. Okay, more words. Focus. 
I love the like found family. The risk of death in this book is so overpowering that it makes it really, really high stakes. And I think that's why I've been freaking out this entire time. Rebecca Yaros is gonna put her readers through the ringer and I love authors like that. If you liked Saba Tahir, I think that you would love this book because it just felt very reminiscent, the writing style of like, an Ember in the Ashes and that series because it's very on the edge of your seat, can't breathe in a lot of different scenes. Oh, the other thing that I love is how Rebecca Yaros has you so captivated and she can write. You're in one scene for like three chapters and it's the really important scenes that she like drags out for either a really long chapter or across multiple chapters. But at no point in time when I was reading this book was I like, oh my gosh, the scene is dragging on forever. I was eating, I was licking my plate, eating all of the crumbs. Loved the battle scenes. When the dragons finally battle, it was so good. Like I was breathless. I was literally, I had to take off my jacket because I was sweating with how good it was. All of the detail during high action scenes. And I think that's a skill because there's some authors who are writing a lot of action, a lot of battle scenes, and you can very quickly lose lose your place, like lose what's going on. There's so many characters, there's so much going on, everyone is playing a different role in the battle scene, but you never get lost. The only book that's gonna be in competition with this one is the second book in the series. I was watching Heather McLeary's reading vlog that she did which is also spoiler free fourth wing and she had said and I don't know where she heard it or read it I need to look into this but she said that this was going to be a five book series I need so much more from this world from these characters I feel that this book set it up so well but it wasn't just a complete like setup book what am I even gonna pick up after this book, I am ruined. I have so many dragon books on like my TBR for this year, like my 23 books for 2023. I've been super into dragon books so far this year and that's why I was so drawn to fourth wing like right off the bat. But this book has ruined me for any other dragon book. There's nothing else to say. I need to go like catch my breath and stop sweating now. Okay, this is a spoiler update. 100 pages in, I am obsessed with Zayden. Like Zayden is daddy. I love that he has shadows that he controls. I think any book where the love interest controls shadows, I'm like, absolutely, yes. You don't have to say anything else. I love the relationships with dragons between their riders. I love that Zayden has like the most badass, one of the most badass dragons. And we've been introduced to the black dragons who are also like, the rarest, the most powerful, the smartest, most intelligent, like there's no outwitting a black dragon. And I feel like where Violet's intelligence has been such a theme so far in these first 100 pages, my prediction is that she's going to get one of the black dragons. I'm not a big fan of Dane. I know that he's kind of stepping into this role as like the goody two shoes, like wants to take care of Violet. He's worried for her. He knows that like she's the underdog very clearly in the situation but it's just gross. Like he just like doesn't believe in her at all. And at every single opportunity, he's trying to get her to abandon her post and like go be a scribe. And she's told him a million bajillion times at this point in the first 100 pages that her mom will not let her. Like her choice was to be a scribe and her mom said, absolutely not, you are going to be a writer even if it kills you. And Dane is just like, I think you should abandon everything and like be a scribe. Like, Dane, shut up. No one asked you. Like, so I don't love him, but I feel like Rebecca Yaros, like he is the red herring. Like she feels a connection with Zayden. Like don't tell me that she doesn't. She does. This is for the spoiler section. I actually hate Dane. And I'm curious that if you were reading this and you liked him, can you please tell me, and I genuinely mean this, why? Because I feel like, I feel like we're supposed to like him, but I hate him. I'm on page 137. They're about to do the gauntlet, which I'm so scared about. Dane like comes up behind her 
and goes, change your mind, it's barely a whisper. No, I sound way more confident than I feel. Change your mind. He, his hand finds mine, concealed by our tight formation as we descend through the passage. Please, I can't, I shake my head, any more than you would leave Kath and run to the scribes yourself. That's different, his hand squeezes mine, and I can feel the tension in his fingers, his arm. I'm a writer. Um... She's a writer too. She's survived in the school for two months now. She's about to do the gauntlet. She's gonna crush it. Like we all know our little girly pop Violet is just going to pull through with her smarty pants brain. And this man is being so annoying. Like, please just stop. And I love that she goes, well, maybe I am too. Like, absolutely queen. Stand up for yourself. Oh my God. Oh my god. For the spoiler section, Dane is dead to me. Dane has been dead to me since the beginning, but I hope that when that man goes to Starbucks, they're sold out of every drink that he wants to get. I hope that every time that man decides to put on his shoes, there's a spider in there that bites him and poisons him. I hope that when that man opens his eyes in the morning, he gets punched in the face every single day. I hate this man with every fiber of my being. Every single cell in my body hates Dane. Public enemy number one, oh my god. I knew he was bad news bears from the very beginning. Oh. Besties, I'm editing this vlog right now and I realized that I never shared my thoughts about the threshing scene and I absolutely meant to. I love that Andarna basically just baited her into like that whole scene because she wouldn't like fly away when the three other idiot people were trying to kill her because they thought that she was like the weakest dragon and they're like she needs to die like okay even though humans literally are not supposed to kill dragons like I thought that that was kind of a weird situation but I love that Andarna just baited Violet into protecting her and wasn't flying away or doing anything and then Tarn I feel like I'm saying both of these dragon names incorrectly so I do apologize he comes and he chose Violet because she decided to protect Andarna and I just think that was so sweet. It was literally so sweet. But there were points when I was getting a little bit frustrated with Violet where she wasn't killing these people who were actively, continuously trying to kill her. But I do understand that that was a big piece of her character development. So it was like, she didn't want to kill anyone and she was showing that she could hurt them and she could take them down and she could kill them if she wanted to. But she was choosing not to and then as I read and end up ended up finishing the book I understood why because then you get to that point where she does actually kill someone and you see the toll that it takes on her and she was nervous about that because it shows that she is weak but really it's just that she has a lot of humanity and she doesn't want to have to kill someone unless she absolutely has to but then that also really plays into her power I was just freaking out when I read the end of the book and so I feel like I didn't really go into any spoiler thoughts at the end when she gets her like storm and lightning power I love the journey that she goes through to control it and le will like learn how to control it and when it was showing up in those spicy scenes with Zayden I was like this is everything that I never knew that I needed like it was just so good oh my gosh when she destroys her entire room I was like let's go this is amazing right at the end when we're kind of getting this reveal about Zayden I don't think that that was a huge plot twist you could kind of see it coming because he's shadow controller he has all these secrets we know that he's this villain type he is already a rebel and you can tell that he was very loyal to his dad and his family and he hasn't fully let that go and so I didn't think that the reveal at the end with Zayden was the big one I thought that the biggest reveal was Brennan and I that's like the main part that I was freaking out about like right at the very end of the like the spoiler section was when Brennan comes and he's like welcome to the rebellion oh my gosh it still gives me like 
chills. I'm just so obsessed with it. But I do really like Zayden's kind of character development, how he self-sacrificed on behalf of the other Rebellion children. And I think it's absolute tea and it's very juicy that the leadership of the school and the king of this land are trying to hide Venon and Wyvern. And I'm so excited about where it's going to go in the next book. <music>